1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We're going to be starting there. 1 Thessalonians, New Testament, chapter 5. And as we all know, tonight is Thanksgiving. Not okay. Of course, it's Halloween. 1 Thessalonians 5. Chapter 5. So we've talked about it some, we've talked about it on Sunday, but the question still stands, what's a Christian do about Halloween? What does a Christian do about Halloween? And you're going to find a hundred different ideas as to what people think we have to do about Halloween. I have this week had to ask so many people, including other Christians, do you don't like Halloween? Why don't you like Halloween? Well, tonight we're going to talk about why I don't like Halloween, and we're going to do it biblically. Um... We've looked at some different subjects uh, this last Sunday. We talked about it from, a, this is from the perspective of going back to the origins of things and why that is important. Um, but uh, now in the past I've talked about this and I, I, I'm a, I've actually I've done this lesson before. I don't have it on record uh, yet and there's some who haven't heard it. And I think it's very important for us to understand and be able to give a biblical answer to why we don't uh, uh, hold to Halloween. Um, and what we're going to talk about is the word evil in the Bible. Okay, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 22 tells us, gives us a command. It says, abstain from all appearances of evil. Abstain, that means stay away from, don't touch, don't mess around with it, reject it. Abstain from all appearances of evil. Now I want you to know that it doesn't say abstain from all evil. Now, why does it say that? Well, because we already know that, right? As Christians, we know to abstain from evil. But this goes a little further, and it tells us to abstain even from all appearances of evil. Now, some will say, well, there's nothing really necessarily evil about Halloween, and that's fine and dandy. We're going to talk about why it is evil. Now, um, obviously, the, uh, the name of the lesson here is Halloween thrice evil. Now, why do I call it that? Well, because the word evil in the Bible has three different definitions to it. Okay, it's got three different definitions. Um, it, uh, where am I here? Here we go. Three definitions to the word evil. The first is that which is wicked in nature. This is the one we normally think of when we think of evil. You know, just evil. That's evil. Um, that which is wicked in character or in nature. Number two is that which is destructive or injurious. It causes injury. It causes destruction, damage. And number three is that which is troublesome. Now today we wouldn't necessarily call something troublesome evil. We might say it's annoying, it's irritating, it's combative. But the Bible uses that term evil in this context as well. So very quickly, we'll just kind of go over some examples of these three, uh, a quick overview of it, how it's used. The first definition of evil is commonly known and used definition, that's which is evil or wicked in nature. Um, when we say the devil is evil, that's of course what we're talking about. An example from the Bible would be in, in, in First and Second Kings and in the books of Chronicles, Many of the kings of, 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 of Israel, in fact, I believe all the kings of Israel, and the king, most of the kings, or about half of the kings of Judah, and why do I split that? Well, because at this time, the kingdom of Israel was split into two parts, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom was Israel, the southern kingdom was Judah. And uh, many of the kings were called evil. Now, uh, why did the Bible say that? Well, because the Bible says that they did wickedly. They did evil in the sight of the Lord. They did wickedly in God's eyes. Uh, they did that which was against God and against His ways. And not only did they do it once or twice, but this was the overall character of their reign as a king. It's not that they just did something bad once or twice. You know, David, who was considered the apple of God's eye, David, who was considered, you know, the, one of the greatest of the kings of Israel, uh, did a couple of very wicked things in his reign. But he was considered a good king because his overall character of his reign was good. But many of the kings, their overall character was just generally wicked. 
They uh, rejected uh, the, the, the uh, worship of God. They brought in idols. They put idols into the house of God. They did great wickedness in the eyes of God. So this is that first definition, that which is evil or wicked in nature. Now the second definition is that which causes, which is destructive or injurious. Now uh, we can think of a car crash, okay, a car accident. It causes damage, it might injure or kill a person. Uh, we might look at that and think it's evil. It's not necessarily evil in that it's wicked. It's evil because it's a bad thing. It's a terrible thing that happened. We don't know what happened. Um, and a good example in the Bible would be when the Hebrews were at the foot of Mount Sinai and when they were uh, in the wilderness, after, just after they had left from Egypt, uh, Moses was on the mountaintop receiving the law from God. Meanwhile, the people down below, even though they had just recently heard the voice of God giving them the Ten Commandments, they were getting uh, antsy, they were getting tired of waiting. They thought maybe Moses was dead. They didn't know what was going on. So they wanted, uh, they wanted Aaron, the high priest, to make them a god that they could look at and worship. And so they, uh, uh, they took all their gold and they gave it to Aaron. And Aaron had made a, uh, uh, a, a golden calf. And they began to worship the calf. And that calf, when, he, when, when, when Aaron made it, he said, This is your god who brought you out of Egypt. Now, I want you to just notice that they weren't meaning to worship a false god. They just wanted a picture, a statue of their god that they could look at. To them, that statue, that golden calf, represented Jehovah God, the one who had brought them out. They had been, uh, for 400 years in Egypt, seeing their worship was that they had gods, they had idols to represent each god. They wanted an idol, a statue that they could look at of their God. Well, God had just told them not to do that. <laughs> so when, uh, uh, when the Lord sent Moses down, he told Moses, they're already broken, breaking the law. And he says, I'm going to destroy them all because they've done wickedly in my sight. I'm going to kill every last one of them. And I'm going to start a whole new nation out from you, from your, from your lineage. And why? Because they had done wickedly in the eyes of God. But uh, the Bible says that when Moses pleaded before him, that the Lord repented. But it doesn't just say he repented. Now, mind you, he doesn't repent of like sin like we do. It just means he, he changed his mind from what he, was, what he said he was going to do. <laughs> but the Bible says that he repented of the evil which he was going to do. Now, does God do evil? Does God do... Wickedness? No. no. This is what it's talking about. This is the evil that God was going to do. He was going to destroy the nation. Now they had done this. He was going to do this to them. He was going to destroy them. He was going to do evil and destroy them. It was going to be destructive and injurious on them. Now he still did something to them and quite a few of them died. But he did not destroy them all. So that's the second kind of evil. The third kind of evil, that which is troublesome. One of the best things, examples that I can give of that is when King Saul was, uh, uh, he was troubled. Uh, he, had been, he had been defying God, and God, the Bible says that God sent a, a, an evil spirit to trouble him. And when this evil spirit was on him, he would uh, be agitated and angry and and, and just, just he couldn't concentrate on what he had to do as a king. He was just irritated by this thing. He was troubled. And so they sent David to come and play on his heart for him. And when he played, that would soothe his spirit. And that evil spirit, a troubling spirit, would go away. Well, again, this, this spirit, the Bible calls it an evil spirit. But it wasn't evil this way. And it wasn't evil this way because it wasn't destroying anything or injuring anything. It was just troubling his spirit. And so, uh, you know, the Lord's not going to send a wicked spirit to trouble you. Now, wicked spirits might trouble you, but God's not going to send them to do that. But he sent a troubling spirit to Saul. It caused him depression. It caused him melancholy. And so when David came and played, it soothed the spirit, and that, that evil spirit of troubling from the Lord left him. 
So these are the three types of evil that the Bible describes. Okay? Wicked in nature, destructive or injurious, and troublesome. So it is my intention tonight to show us how Halloween fits all three. All three. So then we know, as Christians, we ought to abstain. Huh? So number one, is it wicked in character? Okay, is it wicked in character? Um, yeah, well now listen, listen. Uh, next page on notes. You alright? I think it was hobby. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't have time to make coffee. So is Halloween evil in the sense it is wicked in character? One of the closest associations with Halloween is death. Okay? It's death. Why do I say this? Well, this is even when we talk about the origins of Halloween. Halloween, the whole idea of the, of the original night, which was called Sawin, was uh, that it was when the veil between the living and the dead was the thinnest and the dead could pass over. So really, the entire focus was about death. There was that aspect of it. There was the aspect that they were in a time of what they called a death time because the nights were getting longer, the days were getting shorter, all the trees were dying, everything was getting colder. It was like the earth was dying to these people. And so this was the kind of their focus. It was death. Now it's become, this whole thing with death has become very much of just, you know, it's, 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 it's a part of it. And I mean, people will say, well, you know, my kids dress up as, you know, Batman or or uh, uh, Power Rangers or Princess. But you know, the bottom line is, when you go to the store and look at stuff for Halloween, what is most of the stuff? It's mostly, you know, things having to do with death, right? Can I say? So, death. That's a big one. Look at all the decorations, skeletons, zombies, skulls. Wait a minute.
creepy, huh? Uh, so you got your, uh, your monster movies, your slasher movies, your horror movies, all of this stuff. Uh, Ezekiel 18.32 says, For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord. God doesn't have pleasure in the death of the people who die. Because death is not the goal, the original plan. Okay? Life is the original plan, not death. So the Lord is not pleased with death. The Lord is not even pleased with the death of the wicked. Okay? He doesn't even like when the wicked die. Why? Because he doesn't want them to go to hell. He doesn't want anybody to go to hell. He wants people to have eternal life. That's what Christ is about. He is about life. He is not about death. Uh, there's, uh, we can add to this, there's a, uh, Halloween is commonly known as the, uh, the High Sabbath of witchcraft. Uh, I'll read part of their traditional ritual that's spoken to celebrate Halloween. Yes. Ezekiel what? What's that? Ezekiel what? Oh, uh, 1832. Suppose. Um, okay, so this is how it goes. It says, Dread Lord of the Shadows, God of Life and the Giver of Life. Uh, the Dread Lord of Shadows. Okay, this is talking about God. Uh, Yet it is the knowledge of thee, the knowledge of death. Uh, open wide, I pray thee, the gates through which all must pass. Let our dear ones who have gone before return this night to make merry with us. And this is where we get to the whole Sawin thing. And when our time comes as it must, O thou comfort of the consoler, the giver of peace and rest, we will enter thy realms gladly and unafraid. For we know that when rested and refreshed among our dear ones, we shall be born again by thy grace and the grace of the great mother. In case you didn't think, in case you thought it was starting to talk about God there, no. Let it be the same place and the same time as our beloved ones may we meet now and know and love them again. To send we pray thee upon thy servant and the priest, and we give the name of whoever is the priest. So, uh, so they are actually inviting a demon to, uh, to possess them, to enter them, in order to, you know, do their rituals. And so it's spoken to the dread lord of the shadows, the knowledge of whom is the knowledge of death. That is Satan. That is not God. That's not somebody good. So, uh, a part of this was written by a man by the name of Alistair Crowley, who was a set, a such a wicked man, people generally called him the beast. He referred to himself as the beast. And he was pleased about that. <clears throat> so, Halloween is a uh, glorification of death. And it is a high holy day to witches and wiccans. Um, it's evil. Alright? It's evil. Um, we can go over darkness. It's all about darkness. The, the, the three main things of Halloween is death, darkness, and fear. And all three of those are the antithesis of Christianity. Christianity is about life. It is about uh, Christ casting out fear. Okay? And it is about uh, light, because Christ is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. So, number one, is it, is it evil? Is it, does it match? Does it, does it meet the criteria of being wicked? Absolutely. It glorifies death. It's a high holy day of the wicked, uh, witches and the wickeds. Yeah, it's, it's wicked. Number two, is it destructive or injurious? Well, there's a little thing. Has anybody ever heard of the devil night fighters? Yes, ma'am. Is it disruptive or injurious? That's what I meant to say. Is it disruptive? Absolutely. Disruptive. I'm missing a T, sir. So I mean. Um, has anybody ever heard of the uh, uh, the Devil's Night Fighters? I don't know how much these go on today, but at one time this is a big deal. Fire uh, Yeah. So this is uh this is what I, uh, this was a report on this. Uh, on both uh, Halloween and the evening before, popularly called Devil's Night, the occurrence of fire increases in both structures and outdoors. As Halloween has typically been associated with activities and cultural uh, icons related to mischief, it's not surprising that the origin of many of these fires is suspicious or incendiary. That means somebody started them. 
In fact, arson fires on these days are nearly 10% higher than the national average. Some communities have had significant incidences of Devil's Night and Halloween arson fires. In 1994, Detroit, Michigan experienced a record number of Devil's Night arson fires. Since then, Detroit and other communities throughout the nation have initiated programs to report suspicious activity around the area in the nights of October 29, 30, and 31. So you actually have three <laughs> nights that these things are associated with. Well, we have a coincidence of all these California fires. Yeah, although those probably aren't the same, but same time right now. So these fires may well be associated with what Delia mentioned of the bond fires, or they were called bone fires. And uh, the point of the bone fires was to try to uh, give the sun more, more light and more fire to get it to last longer, to, to, to stay up longer. They're trying to endow it with extra power. So uh, uh, they were called, they call them bonfires today, they were called bone fires because they tended to burn a lot of bones in them because they made a lot of sacrifices. Now some people today will say, well, they would sacrifice a cow. But uh, they were probably sacrificing people as well because human sacrifice has always been uh, utilized in pagan worship uh, for favor from the gods. So, uh, so that's probably a part of what it is. Okay, so to that we can add the statistics on the average of, of uh, what we have here? Uh, Four times more children aged 5 to 14 die on Halloween between 4 p.m. and 10 p.m., more than any other night of the year. And that's based on a 25-year study by the Center for Disease Control. So that's not an independent fundamental Baptist group coming up with numbers. That is the government CDC. Now say what you will about it, but they usually aren't going to go on to things that are politically incorrect unless it's, there's a good reason for it. Now this is only deaths that are caused by children being hit by cars. Okay? A lot of kids get hit by cars, and you can understand why. It doesn't include deaths resulting from other incidents. After this, kids getting beat up for their candy. Okay, that happens. I got beat up for my candy when I was a kid. If you can believe I was not small enough for people to beat me up. Um, there is the, uh, the well-known, the unsubstantiated uh, uh, foreign objects in the candy. I was just watching something where a mother was showing that her kid got Twizzlers, I think it was from last year, and she popped one open, there's a needle sticking in it. You know, these things, that people will say, oh, this is all just uh, urban legend. Well, urban legends are often based on something, and it does happen, um, as we can see here. Token shedding of blood. Token shedding of blood. Or just being mean, too. So, but, but I'm saying, yeah, there's, there's a certain amount of both of it. And of course, nowadays, we have something totally new to throw in there. And people have tried to tell me, oh, this never happens. But it's the marijuana edibles. Okay? The candy companies, well, not the same candy companies, but the, the, the marijuana edible people make candies and they make them look like your standard candy. Now, they're not all in these nice, neat wrappers that people would kind of look at and say, hmm. Um, I was talking about that online the other day, and somebody said, oh, you know, that never happens because these things are so expensive. I said, seriously? I said, you get a couple of stoners who are stoned and think it would just be funny to give out their, their marijuana candy to kids. They absolutely would do that. Oh, it's too expensive. They'd have to be rich. Anybody remember when there was, it was a popular thing to make marijuana brownies? Well, marijuana was real expensive then and illegal. On top of it, said, but people would do it just because they thought it'd be funny to get you in the office stone or at school stone. You know, people do it. Kids have gone to the hospital because they got cold candy that had the marijuana in it. The marijuana that makes me mad. Don't do the marijuana. But uh, <laughs> uh, but you know, I mean, in the last few years, it has happened. Sometimes it happens totally by accident. Um, sometimes it might happen int intentionally. So, uh, so, is, uh, so is Halloween, uh, can it be injurious? Can it be destructive? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, number three. So we got two out of three now. Number three. Is it troublesome? Is it troublesome? Is it just some kids out having a good time? Can it be troublesome? Well, um, think about the very term, trick or treat. Okay? 
if you don't give me a treat, we're going to play a trick, right? <laughs> what kind of tricks have us heard of kids playing on people? Knocking over the outhouse. Huh? Knocking over the outhouse. Knocking over the outhouse. Don't have that too often anymore, but the, the little blue houses, yeah. Tipping cows. Tipping cows, okay. Um, toilet paper. Toilet paper. Yeah, TP in a house. Eggs. 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 Big one. You ever try to wash eggs off that are dry on the side of the house? We had to once because they ain't all the church building ones. We couldn't front get door. it off. Yeah, um, that's I don't get that one. No, you're not. Oh, not, not, well, not the church. Yeah. <laughs> no. um, I have a TP. And TP doesn't sound like a big deal until it gets wet. And then you're never getting that stuff off. <laughs> um, but, uh, so go online and type in the search on Halloween vandalism. See how much comes up. And it especially seems prevalent in Great Britain, of all places. Add to this the uh, huge amounts of candy. Well, let's see. Let's it here. There's a TP. Oh, yeah, people chucking uh, paint into cars, uh, vandalizing houses. No candy. Egging things. Car is the easiest thing to get egg because that's not that hard to get off. You know, get on the on a building. Baloney. On a car. Yeah. What's that? Baloney when they put it on a car now. Oh, oh they put the car off. Really? Baloney does? I never follow them. I think I think it's pepperoni. Mm -hmm. Probably all of them. We'll we'll take your car, we'll try all of them. Ah. Add on to that. Things along the lines of people uh, get fat, people have teeth problems, people get the diabetes. Um, you know, some some friends were talking at work today about how they were happy that tomorrow's a day off because uh, they plan to be in a candy coma by midnight and uh, and don't, wouldn't want to have to come into work tomorrow. So uh, so the question is then, uh, is it troublesome? Does it cause some trouble? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I could preach an entire message on the roots of Halloween. I could preach about the various meanings of the traditions, where they come from, the rituals that take place. I could spend an hour or more talking about the involvement of the witches. In fact, tonight, I believe it was the witches a huge group of witches were planning to uh, cast a, uh, a restraining spell on President Trump tonight because this is their high holy night. Or unholy night, I don't know what call it. Unholy night. But, uh, and this is the night they want to do that because it's the night they believe they have power. So I could talk about all these things, but I believe it's plain to see that Halloween is not just a time for fun. It's not just a time for free candy. It's a lot more than that. <clears throat> it's filled with traditions and trappings that are clearly against God, that are shown to be destructive, they're shown to cause injury, they're shown to be troubling to society in many ways. And as such, I believe that without the Bible saying specifically, Halloween is evil, because they didn't have Halloween when the Bible was written. I think this Halloween was around before that, but... Uh, but not Halloween, uh, it doesn't have to. See, the, 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 the problem is, is so many Christians want to have everything specifically spelled out in Scripture. And if it's not spelled out in Scripture, they figure, well, we have freedom to do it. But as I've shown you tonight, if we take what the Bible does say and we apply those things, those teachings, to everything, which is what we're supposed to do, we're supposed to take everything in our lives and read the Bible and try to apply what we can to it to see if it's right or wrong. Now, don't get me wrong, there are actually some things that are kind of gray area. There are areas where we have some liberty to choose one way or the other. But, you know, when we have something that says uh, uh, to abstain from all appearance of evil, uh, there's a lot of things we can apply to that. Um, now, granted, a lot of people out here would probably say that we're evil because we're teaching this. But we have to go by what is evil in the eyes of God, not in the eyes of the world. Okay? That's what matters to us. And the Bible gives three definitions to the word evil. 
And clearly all three can be applied to aspects of Halloween. It doesn't mean everything that everybody does is evil. It doesn't mean that everybody who's celebrating Halloween is evil. No. It just means that the basics of the night, the traditions, the trappings, the things that are clearly openly a part of it represent certain things that are evil. And as such, as Christians, we ought to stay away from them. Because they're not just evil, but they're even the appearances of evil. We as Christians need to be very careful of everything we do in our lives. Now, I don't believe that Christians should never have fun. Okay. I was juggling plastic skulls. I mean, come on. We can have fun. This sermon's not against fun for Christians. Okay. But I believe that we can have fun without compromising our Christian beliefs and our Christian principles. I'm not against all holidays, but there are some that despite how we may try to make them Christian, again, we have to go back, we have to look at the roots, we have to look at where they start, we have to look at the trappings of it and the, the traditions of it. What are they? Are they Christian and are they things that we should do? Um, most of us know that I, I stand against Christmas. Now, my stand on Christmas is not as hard as my stand on, on, on Halloween. Halloween is so blatant, how can you not be against it? The way I think. Um, Christmas, you know, there's a few things that I would avoid. Lying to your children. Lying to your children is a big one. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you want to sit down and watch Santa Claus stuff, great, have a good time. As long as the kids know that it's all make-believe and aren't expecting Santa to come and do something, you know? I love Christmas movies, you know? But, you know, don't put yourself into debt over it, you know? Don't, uh, you know, I know I, I <laughs> talk to friends and I was like, all right, you know, are we going to be paying for Christmas for the next six months? Like, no. What kind of a holiday is that? Holidays are supposed to be free. It's supposed to be fun. Not worrying about, oh, I'm going to have fun today and worry the next six months because I'm going to be broke. Uh -huh. um, you know, uh, one of the things we like to do around Christmas, we haven't had a chance to do it in a few years, is we'll make Christmas cards, but they're actually tracts. But it looks like a Christmas card, but it's got the gospel in it. And we'll put it in an envelope, we'll write Merry Christmas on it and everything, and we'll, and we'll go downtown to Reno and we'll pass them out to people. Just say, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Who's Christmas? What is that? It's a Christmas card. It's just a Christmas card. Merry Christmas. And we've actually had a couple. Now, amazingly, a lot of people will reject it. No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that. Um, you know, if I said, uh, free, uh, uh, free shrimp cocktail, they'd be taking six of them. But, uh, <laughs> but we've actually had a few people come back and say, thank you. I haven't gotten any Christmas cards or heard from friends or family this year. This means a lot to me. Thank you very much. So some people get something out of it. And, you know, we don't know how many of them are going to read them and get the gospel out of it. And we don't know if any of them are ever going to get saved. But you know what? We're planting a seed, and that's what we're told to do. The, we're either planting or we're watering, but it's the Lord who will bring the increase. We may never get to see that. But we don't know how many of that that's we're going to be just a part of somebody getting saved. I would like to do that, it's just it's hard to get everybody together, have everybody enough room. We used to have a van, so we could haul a bunch of people down there. We didn't have a van anymore. Yeah, for that, clean that third seat up and put it in there. Yeah. But, uh, um, and you know, sometimes we've, when we haven't been able to do that, we've gone through Title, or through Title IX here and done the same thing, passed those out. Just told people, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. They're getting the gospel in their hands. So, uh, so, again, I'm not against fun. It's just as Christians, we need to be sure that even when we have fun, is it going to dishonor God? We don't want to dishonor God. Maybe not everything is going to necessarily honor Him, and we should seek to always honor Him. Um, I don't know that I can say that going in walking down the river with my wife holding hands with me is necessarily honoring God, per se, though I think it is because I could be walking down there with somebody else's wife. So. <laughs> um, and that would be a bad thing. So, uh, so what we do, 
on all these things, when we consider are we going to do this holiday, that holiday, Christmas, Easter, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Fourth of July, Veterans Day, everybody can celebrate Veterans Day, that's okay, it's my birthday. Um, but uh, all of it's got to be done in consideration of Christ. Are we honoring Him? We should honor Him a lot. <laughs> we should honor Him in everything, mm -hmm. as best as we can. So, but again, Halloween, that's what we're talking about tonight. It doesn't matter how hard they tried. You know, the Catholics tried to turn it into a, uh, into a, a Christian celebration, call it All Hallows Eve, which was the day before the uh, All Saints Day. And it just really didn't catch on. It's just Halloween. It's just Sawin. It's just the night of the dead. <laughs> and that's what it is, you know. Dia, Dia de los Muertos, Dia de Dead. I don't know if my Spanish is good there or not, close enough. How about that dead bread? The dead bread? What? You saw the bread at the Walmart, and it was in Spanish. In oh, yeah. Islands. Yeah, yeah, it was Spanish for dead bread. It's bread for the Day of the Dead. Special dead bread. So, so, uh, put your, uh, Put your direction of serving God, pleasing Him, not just yourself, not just the world. Okay. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, for this night, Lord. We thank you for this lesson, Father. We thank you, Father, that even in, in even in such small things, Lord God, we can gain great truth if we're willing to open our eyes. We're willing to look. With, uh, with, a, with, with a heart toward you, Lord God, to see what we should and shouldn't be doing, Father. Not everything in this modern day is mentioned specifically in your word because it couldn't be. It had to be applicable to the people who it was written to then as much as it is to us today. But Father, you have left us many, many good things in here if we're willing to study the word, if we're willing to open it and learn and seek your will, Father. And we just ask, oh God, that in what we do, Lord God, that we would be honored and pleasing unto you. Father, we ask that you to bless this night, Lord. We ask, Father, that all these kids and adults that are walking around tonight, Lord, keep them safe. We don't want anybody hurt, Father. We don't want anybody hit by cars or beat up or anything like that, Father. We do ask for their protection, Father. But we also ask, Lord God, for their salvations. Help us, Lord God, to be quick with the gospel to those who are in need. We just thank you so much for it, Father. Bless this night now, we pray in all things. We ask it in Jesus' name.